Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And very good morning to you all. <coughs> I feel uh, small and inferior appearing after Minister Manuel, <laughs> physically and psychologically. <laughs> so um, I'm going to make my speech interesting by uh, starting from the conclusion part of my speech. And you can leave the room after that. Uh, at your own will. But before that, uh, let me greet uh, DG uh, Dr. Peter Holmgreen, uh, my fellow plenary speakers, high-level panel discussion and forum speakers, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and I also would like to uh, express my sincere gratitude to uh, the Center for International Forestry uh, Research, C4, and the Ministry of Forestry, Republic of Indonesia, uh, for giving Brunei the platform uh, to share our country's experience in sustainable forest management in this uh, Forest Asia Summit 2014. And I hope to uh, provide the link between what Minister Manuel has said and the panel discussion after this on collaborative efforts on forest management. So as I said, I will straight away uh, go to the conclusion part of my speech, which is that climate change and related issues like food security and natural calamities is a global issue. For that, uh, Brunei Darussalam, my country, uh, will commit uh, the following. Firstly, to continue to offer uh, our tropical uh, rainforest for use as research and study on terrestrial flora and fauna, marine life, as well as forest microbes and microorganisms. Secondly, to uh, continue to commit sustainable and responsible agricultural practices, we will commit, we will limit our agricultural production uh, to no more than 1% of our land areas even for as important as the production of staple foods such as rice. And we will continue to leverage on technology and know-how to achieve our food security either through the use of higher uh, variety of crops or more productive and efficient farmers through the use of uh, mechanization. And finally, this is the crucial part that we will continue to collaborate with our neighbors sharing our borders in the island of Borneo under the Heart of Borneo Initiative. My statement will center around three main topics, a lot less than Minister Manuel, seven um, inspiration, but I got only three which is uh, Brunei's strategies in protecting and conserving forests. Secondly, the preservation of uh, peat swamp forests. And thirdly, how we address the challenges of forest loss and degradation. Now, on this first topic of how Brunei strategize its policy in pro protecting and conserving forests, despite uh, being a small country, Brunei Darussalam has gained international recognition for having uh, a world-class tropical rainforest of which majority is still in pristine condition and protected by law passed some 80 years ago in 1934, the Forest Act. Now, with this forest act, our country are still 75% covered with trees. And the said forest act provides the basic law for administration of the country's forests. And the law also emphasizes the importance of biological diversity conservation, bioprospecting, access and benefit sharing, enforcement, and forest protection. And in addition to the law, there is also in place a national forest policy to guide us on the management and utilization of our forest resources. 
And this policy, this national forest policy, emphasizes the importance of forestry to the environment. In other words, as the Minister Manuel mentioned, putting forestry center into everything else. And the vital role of research and technology, uh, human resources development, and the implementation of a sound and balanced forestry programs and management strategies. In other words, in Brunei, there is a strong political will and active participation of all levels of society to protect and conserve our natural forest heritage. Moving on to the second topic, the preservation of peat swamp forest in Brunei, where they are very much intact and around 80% are still in good quality and believed to be the highest proportion of intact peat swamp forests in Southeast Asia. Realizing the true protective and biological value of the peat swamp ecosystem, the government took immediate action to preserve the forest by banning the utilization. And this proved to be a wise decision because the indirect benefits that the peat swamp ecosystem to the country go beyond our expectations and significantly contributed to our aggressive economic initiative. The protective benefits that the peat swamp ecosystem provide against natural calamities save huge amount in terms of life and properties. And the sustainable supply of fresh water from the peat swamp ecosystem has sustained our oil and gas industry operations. We understand that there are uh, more benefits to be had in terms of the rich biological diversity and the indigenous uh, use of our peat swamp forests. As such, the sequestration of massive carbon deposits of our peat swamp ecosystem, as well as in our natural forests, will be our great contribution to the Global Climate Change Initiative. At present, we are opening our windows for more research collaborations in further understanding the ecosystem and to develop effective management strategies for the benefits of the global communities. And the last topic is how do we address the challenge of forest loss and degradation. Despite uh, its size, or rather because of its size, Brunei also faces some challenges on forest loss, specifically the conversion of state land forests to other land uses, such as for shelter, agricultural, and other development activities in the country. These developments are inevitable and need to be handled carefully. As such, there is a necessity to implement a landscape holistic approach that would address the conflicting interests for land and related resources. And one such approach is the Hada Borneo Initiative, which is a transboundary agreement among the country of Brunei Darussalam, Indonesia, and Malaysia to facilitate uh, the conservation of the forest resources at the same time allowing development to take place sustainably. More importantly, the Harder Borneo Initiative aims to minimize deforestation, forest degradation, and the associated loss of biodiversity and ecosystem services in the island of Borneo. It is a short introduction to the Harder Borneo, but it does require a big forum to tell about the initiative, the Harder Borneo. Now, the increasing appreciation of forest conservation in Brunei and the value of the biodiversity has also led another approach in forest management and administration. We have decided to stop timber harvesting in our production forest reserve in order to maintain the integrity of our forest ecosystem. 
This is not to say that our timber harvesting operations or the selective felling system is not sustainable. It is just that we recognize the increasing value of our forest ecosystem based on its ecological services and biological diversity to be of much value than the timber resources alone. Simultaneously, we also recognize the contribution of our wood-based industry to the national economy. As such, timber harvesting operations will now be confined in a forested area intended for forest plantation development. Market-based incentive will soon be in place to encourage the industry to invest on modern machineries in order to increase efficiency and produce value-added wood products. And to complement the establishment of forest plantation, the government will encourage private-public partnership through the three farmland concept. And under this concept, potential private investors will be given the opportunity to enter into an agreement with the government and invest in forest plantation establishment with compatible land uses such as ecological tourism, agroforestry, and bioprospecting. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, let me once again repeat what I said earlier, that is climate change and related issues like food security and natural calamities is a global issue. Brunei Darussalam being a small country, but with a big heart, makes our initiative uh, more manageable by putting important sectors like forestry, agriculture, fishery, and tourism under one ministry, under one authority, the Ministry of Industry and Primary Resources is a rational strategy. However, smallness has its own disadvantage. Any small changes in climate will have a profound impact on the country. Therefore, we, as a responsible member of the United Nations and its related bodies, Brunei Darussalam will commit, as I said, the following, to continue to offer our tropical rainforest for use as research and study on terrestrial flora and fauna, marine life, as well as forest microbes and microorganisms. Secondly, to continue to commit to sustainable and responsible agricultural practices, we will limit our agricultural production to no more than 1% of our land area, and we will continue to leverage on technology and know-how to achieve our food security, either through the use of high-yield variety of crops or more productive and efficient farmers, including the use of mechanization. And finally, I would em emphasize that this is something that can relate to the panel discussion after this, to continue to collaborate with our neighbors sharing border with us in the island of Borneo under the Heart of Borneo initiative. And of course, we cannot do this alone. Uh, the issue at hand requires a regional, a regional and global actions and efforts to come up with better ideas, policies, action plans, strategies, and implementation. These policies need to be translated into actions and implementation, which will certainly require funds, expertise, knowledge, infrastructure, as well as substantive assistance financially and technically from potential partners, donors, investors, and developed nations. This is the short content of my remark. The full text of it is available online and is at the Secretariat. Finally, I would like to conclude by expressing my sincere thanks once again to the summit organizers for giving us the platform and the opportunity to share our country's experience in forest management and administration. I hope we have contributed in one way or the other in meeting the objective of the summit. Thank you for your attention, and we may, may we have a productive day ahead of us.